All right, it is 105. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. It is another beautiful day before it absolutely pours rain for another week. So I hope at this time you guys get out and enjoy the nice weather while it's here. I definitely know when school's over today that I am going to go try to be outside as much as possible just to like soak it in and, and get it before the big the big rain, you know? Uh, because I think uh, if I'm doing my weather report right, tomorrow's gonna be a really wet one, and then it's gonna be just a little wet every day for the next for the next week, you know? Like Northwest weather. So hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to class. Uh, today we're doing part two of Lav Cosine. So uh, since you guys know what Lav uh, cosine is about we're just going to be doing some extra practice problems with that so a couple of uh, announcements that i do want to make um so tomorrow obviously is a practice day but monday is a review day so i have posted the review up on uh web assign so just remember that the way that i'm doing reviews is that the review can only help your grade it can't hurt your grade so make sure you do the review. Uh, if I remember right, I have the review set up so you get 100 attempts per question. 100 attempts per question. So, um, you know, so you can't, you can't go wrong there. Um, so we're going to, so uh, it would be nice if you guys uh, had that done before Monday because that way Monday you guys could come in and ask questions if you needed. So make sure that if you guys uh, have questions about that review that we do that again uh, we do that be uh, get that done before Monday so that we can uh, ask questions and stuff okay um, and then Tuesday we're gonna be taking the midterm in class and then uh, we've decided that we're going to um, have you that due by the start of next class, which is Thursday at 1030. Okay, so we'll start it in class. If you don't finish it in class, that's okay. Uh, you will have until the next class Thursday uh, at 1030. Okay, and I do have to say the light fixtures in uh, in the, uh, the field house have never looked more pretty. So I appreciate the view of that. So thank you so much uh, for sharing that view. Um, all right, guys, let's get into it. Does anybody have questions about the midterm? So we're going to be taking the midterm in class on Tuesday. Uh, you're going to have Tuesday, Wednesday to get that done. Oh, cafeteria. There we go. Yeah, the light fixtures in the cafeteria are baller. I appreciate that. Um, uh, but now uh, you got rid of the light fixtures. Now it's just now it's just the ceiling and the uh, the ventilation. But the ventilation still is really important. Um, Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much better. I appreciate it. Um, I'm pretty sure the web camera faces forward, so um, don't know what's going on there. All right, so um, let's take a look. So we got the midterm on Tuesday. All right, let's take a look. So law signs day two. So today is 429.21. Was stalling a little bit, see if you guys would actually talk to me. But it turns out the answer is no. You guys don't like talking to me, but that's okay. I enjoy talking to you guys. So, law of cosines, day two. Ooh, some of you really don't like talking to me. So, let's talk about law of cosines. So, today, what we're going to be talking about is um, some different examples of this. Okay. So, oh. I've already done that one. So we're going to do some applications here, and I think it's pretty fun. So uh, the first application we're going to do is a baseball application. So we're going to say we have a, a baseball field. So let's see if I can do this right. So boom. Now, people often miss state that a baseball field is a baseball diamond, that's just not true. Uh, there's no such thing as a diamond. So uh, what people call a baseball diamond is a square, right? Okay, that's that's all a diamond is. It's, it's not a shape, it's a square. It's a baseball square, okay? So what's gonna happen here 
is that the distance between, uh, so I think this is for a softball field, so the distance between home plate and first base is 60, and I'm just gonna go show that it's a square, so all of those distances are the same. And the distance, so the pitcher's mound is right here, and the pitcher's mound is 43 feet away from home plate. Okay. Um, so the question is going to be is how far is the pitcher's plate? Do they call it the pitcher plate or the pitcher's mound? The pitcher's mound from first base. Okay, so that's what we're going to answer right here. Oh, I'm sorry that you're having internet issues. Um, so I am recording this, so I will be posting this to the YouTubes and you can view it through the tubes. So 43 feet is the distance from home plate to the pitcher's mound. Um, you would think that we would have symmetry like this, but it we gotta it's not, and we gotta we gotta double check, right? So just because my picture looks symmetric doesn't mean that it is symmetric, right? Uh, so let's call this. I'm just gonna call this D for the distance. So we want to find how far it is from the pitcher's mound to first base. So to do this, right, we're gonna have to know some things. So for the first thing is. The pitcher mound is symmetrical in here. So this is gonna be half. So half of 90 is 45 degrees. So what do we know here? We know a side, an angle, and a side. So that means we have side, angle, side, which means we don't have to worry about ass, right? I just, I feel like whenever I play baseball, if I have to worry about ass, I'm not a very good baseball player, right? Um, though I do feel like, uh, never mind, let's not go down that road. <laughs> Um, just reminds me of my child, my childhood, right? Because uh, my mom used to always tell me she liked baseball because she just liked looking at the pitchers. But um, we do not have the other angles. No, we do not. Okay, all we know is that the pitcher's plate is 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 directly perpendicular to home plate. Okay, so we're gonna go like this you guys keep you guys keep like like just saying like like the answer is obvious but it's not so let's take a look at this so we want to find d so the best way to do this is to use law of cosines so why don't you guys go ahead and find d and you don't need any other angles and you don't have other angles so you don't need them and you don't have them so go ahead and find d guys on your own let's do this So again, we're solving for the distance between the pitcher's mound and home plate. Here, I'm gonna put a time limit up.
So again, we're just finding that distance, giving you guys plenty of time to work on it. And then we'll do a second one and a third one and a fourth one. Wow, people still coming in. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a look at this, guys. So again, uh, this is a perfect case for law of cosine. So we can say that d squared is going to be um, 43 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 43 times 60 times cosine of 45 degrees. Ooh, ran off there, right? So, um, so right here, we're going to be um, just cranking this one out. So I can, now remember, when I take the square root of a square, I'm gonna get plus or minus. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this first, because I wanna, I can just do this all at once in a calculator. So those go away. Now, we're gonna ignore the negative, right? We're going to ignore the negative because, uh, the negative distance here doesn't make sense in this, in this thing right here. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to go do, 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 do. So I got 43 squared okay, plus 60 squared minus 2 times 43 times 60 times cosine of 45 and boom. And so we get the distance D is approximately 42.43, and I think we're in feet. There we go. So that's how it goes. Does anybody have questions about that? So um, just a, a reminder on assignments, I always, um, update uh, Skyward on the day that the assignments are due. So your last assignment was due today, so I'll be updating that. And then if you guys are turning in late work through extensions, you should always email me to let me know because I never know if you guys turn stuff in or not. Okay, or else I have to go through each assignment and each student and check each one, okay? So please do that if you uh, have turned in an extension. So I take it no one has any questions? All right, well, that's really good. Okay, so you guys are comfortable doing that? Okay. So let's do another example, and then let's see what's going on with that. So what we're gonna take a look at next is another baseball example. Okay, and we're gonna have our bases here, so this is just a different view of this. Okay, and then we have a little pitching mound right here. Okay, and now in this example, this is gonna be a little bit different. So uh, what's gonna happen is uh, the batter is gonna hit a ball to right field. Okay, so the batter is gonna hit a ball down the right field line, and the batter is gonna hit it 160 feet. Okay, so here, maybe I can do a different color. So the batter hits the ball 160 feet, okay, to here. And then at that point, the right outfielder is going to run. So let's see here. So they're running, so they're going to have some like sweet hairdo flowing back. Maybe they'll make them bald. There we go. Okay, and 
they got their glove on so let's make like a little beefy glove there yeah okay so they're gonna catch the ball i wish i had cool hair like that huh that'd take a lot of a lot of joe and they're gonna throw the ball to second base okay they're gonna throw that ball to second base and then the second baseman he's not running or she's not running so his hair is gonna, or their hair is gonna be more down like this. Ooh, let's do curly hair. I like curly hair. And then it's gonna be like, hey, pass me the ball. And then they're gonna throw it to home plate, where the catcher is gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm a catcher. And they're just super excited. So they just, they're just excited about baseball. Okay, they're not excited. All right, so there we go. There's my picture, okay? So you can tell I'm a coach. I like drawing up game plans. Now, what we want to know is the outfielder is going to be throwing it to the second baseman. This is uh, going to be uh, 85 feet, right? So this is a set distance right here. But if that ball is hit, we want to know how far is my outfielder going to throw. And the reason for this is if I know uh, average distances that my outfielders need to throw, then I can design a training regimen where I have my players throwing uh, at a certain distance so that we can get them throwing more accurately and a little bit faster, okay? So um, this angle is gonna be 45 degrees, and I want to know the distance that that person is throwing, and yeah. So I'm gonna put up a timer. Uh, how long do we think we need? Do we need three minutes and 30 seconds? Let's do that. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And, ooh, you know what would be really good? A boat. Let's go like this. Maybe a sail. shark well, that's a terrible shark um, <laughs> mm, my shark needs tail there we go um, it's a happy shark maybe some gills Then maybe a text box. Uh, you know, I don't even think an art teacher. I should have just been an art, an artist. Right? I can sell this as an NFT. Or an EFT, whatever those are called. So this is this is boat soccer or boat baseball. Pretty bad shark, though. I feel bad about the shark. There we go. It's a little wimpy arm. Oh, the timer isn't going down. Well, that's embarrassing. It's probably been three minutes. Do you guys need more time? Just need one person to tell me they need more time. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys more time here. I'm gonna go like this.
I think that's a good point. If I'm going to reference the Titanic, I should have made that an iceberg instead of a shark. Well, what if it's a shark iceberg? It's an iceberg shaped like a shark, which would explain how ugly the shark is. Boom. There it is. Okay. Speaking of boom, there it is. Let's go ahead and solve this. So I want to find this side. Okay. I have the angle across from it and I have the other two sides. So perfect for law of cosine. So I'm going to have x squared equals 85 quantity squared plus 160 quantity squared minus 2 times 85 times 160 times cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, so then uh, we want to take the square root of both. We're going to ignore the negative because it, negative doesn't make sense here. So I'm going to have x equals the square root of all that junk. So let's just type this into our calculator. So I'm going to have 85 squared plus 160 squared minus 2. Oh, you know what I didn't say? Onward, stallion! Thank you. Okay, I got it. And then 85 and then 160 and then cosine of 45. Okay, so I got that all in there. And now my stallion will compute it for me. Oh, yeah. So looks like my outfielder needs to be able to throw consistently 116.58 feet. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Maybe we should. Sharkberg. It's, it's half shark, half iceberg. Sharkberg. Mm -hmm. Sharkberg. Why do I sound like a horse? It's a great question, Sharkberg. Does anybody have a question about math or a question for Sharkberg? You know, I bet I bet Sharkberg's pretty sad, right? Pretty Sharkberg's pretty sad because of of global warming, you know? Things are things are pretty bad for Sharkberg right now. But on the bright side, Maybe Sharkbird is seeing the world because he's broken away from the iceberg. I mean, from the ice cliff. So he's sailing through the northern seas. And as he travels, he's noticing that he becomes lighter and lighter until Sharkbird just whoo, blows away. I mean, you could ask. I'm sure Sharkbird, Sharkbird would love to be your friend. Seems like a pleasant, a pleasant, pleasant, uh, a pleasant little Sharkbird. All right. Does anybody have questions? I'll have to ask for Sharkberg's uh, Instagram handle to share with you guys later. I want to believe that like uh, class, if we were if we were all in person, that class would be like this as well. I mean, it would be. It would be me making bad jokes and you guys just staring at me. I get that a lot, so um, let's just move on. All right, well, our next problem is going to be the adventures of Sharkbird. Okay, and we got to be careful because with global warming, right, Sharkberg might turn into Sharknado. Mm. But there's no, you know what's worse than a Sharknado? A Sharkberg, no. Because it's not just sharks, it's sharks and icebergs. Mm, shark puddle is what happens after the Sharknado. It's the, it's the sequel. Sharknadeberg, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Sharknadeberg. Oh. Part shark, part tornado, part berg. Gosh. That is so good, guys. I feel like we got a movie coming on. All right, so.
Sharkberg here. He's like, oh, I'm sad, I'm melting. So what happens is Sharkbird's melting and he starts going away. He starts going away from the ice shelf. Sad, Sharkberg. Okay. But then a current, right? A warm current pushes Sharkberg in this direction. Okay. So, if the total distance traveled is 139 miles, and this distance, what are we trying to find here? <laughs> oh, okay. And we know this distance is 80. I don't, I don't know that guys, I'm trying to make this problem interesting and it's just, it just turned out not to be very interesting. We want to solve what was the change in directions, right? So this warm current, this warm, maybe it's an Atlantic current came and hit Sharkberg and changed his course. We want to know how much, how much his course changed. I'm trying to make this fun. All right, here we go. Let me let me set a timer and actually hit go on this one. So I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give you guys three minutes. Three minutes sound good. Let's do three minutes. Uh, maybe three minutes and thirty because it's a little bit more algebra in this one. There we go. Let's do this. The Adventures of Sharkberg. Poor Sharkberg. What if I told you freezers? The way that they get cold is they produce heat. And 
Freon, which is in freezers, is really bad for the environment. The more you know, the more you know. We should turn this class into an environmental studies class. We can talk about stuff like that. Like, I mean, it's cool that we have refrigerators, but all those chemicals that go into them, how are they disposed? And do we actually recycle plastics? And the answer is we really don't. Yeah. And you know, another thing that's really, that's really, that's really uh, disturbing, Freon isn't free, which is really confusing. What happens to them? They dig a hole in the ground and then they cover up the hole. <laughs> or they put it in a metal container and then they put that into the ground. Or they dump it into the ocean. Depends on uh, where you are in the world. Yeah. So let's take a look at this. So we want to find this angle. So remember the relationship is with opposite angles, opposite sides. So in this case, I'm going to take 139 squared equals 80 squared. So these are just my other two sides and then minus two of those other two sides, two times those other two sides. And then I'm going to have cosine of theta. Now, I like to just do this symbolically, right? So if I did this symbolically, then it would be C squared minus A squared minus B squared all over negative two times A times B and then cosine inverse of all of this equals theta, right? So if you just solve, solve it, uh, if you just solve it um, uh, symbolically, then you can be like, okay, this is my C squared, this is my A squared, this is my B squared, this is my A, this is my B, right? And then I can just plug in the numbers. And you guys, if you get really good at just solving symb symbolically, you save so much time because you're not writing down every number. You just say, okay, this is this, this is this, this is this, and then solve it. So I start by subtracting and then I divide and then I take inverse cosine, okay? And the better you get at this, the faster these problems are gonna get. So in my calculator, I'm gonna get, I have inverse cosine, make sure you guys are in degrees. So inverse cosine, and then I have 139 squared. Oops, I'm gonna have to do, let's make this a, there we go, 139 squared um, minus, oops, I don't want it to be up. Oh gosh, what have I done? Okay, what if, okay, okay, so squared. There we go. Uh, minus 80 squared, minus 60 squared. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna have negative two times 80 times 60. And then that's it, that's all she wrote. Close that up. So I get the angle theta is 166.15 degrees about. Are you guys okay with this? Does anybody have questions? Did I skip too much? Do you guys want me to go back and show some smaller steps? Excellent. Sharkberg approves. All right, well, um, uh, it would only be a curved path if the distances were big enough to take into the curvature of the earth. If the distances weren't very great, then uh, the curvature of the earth, because it's so big, wouldn't take into effect. That's why we only teach you uh, Euclidean geometry because it turns out because the curvature of the earth is so slow that Euclidean geometry works as really good approximations for small distances. So until you start getting to long distances like going from Seattle to New York, uh, that's when you need to take into the curvature of the planet. Um, but so like if I was flying from Seattle to New York, then you definitely need to take into the curvature or if you're taking a boat 
from the East Coast to Europe, you want to take into the curvature of the Earth or else you're totally going to be off, right? So only at large distances do you need to take in curvature. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. You're like, you, you don't like that, like the current uh, instantaneously change that. You, you're, you're more one of those like, hey, craft F equals MA and Newton's third law says an object in motion stays in motion. Well, come on now. We're talking about Sharkberg. He doesn't, he doesn't listen to Newton. He's like, who's Newton? I'm Sharkberg. Okay. All right, let's do one more Sharkberg problem and let's get out of here. Wow, that's a really aggressive dorsal fin. Okay, so I got an angry attack dorsal fin. Why he mad? He's mad because iceberg, iceberg, sharkberg. I don't know. Okay, let's do let's do another one. So let's say he travels this way for forty five miles. This is where you might want to start taking into account the curvature of the Earth. And then goes 25 miles. And then total is 62 miles. Let's figure out. He's like, oh man, I regret. Like, you see this path he took? He's like, oh man, I, I regret. Like, he overdid it, right? Like, totally not efficient. So this dotted line is the most efficient path to get to the same location. So let's say his location is A and he went this way man, like there's a more efficient. So the next time he wants to know this angle theta to know what angle he could have gone just straight there. Okay, so let's find angle theta. He's mad because, because he's losing, he's losing half of his body. He's, he's sad because no one invited him to the ice cream social. You know, no one wanted, no one wanted to have ice cream with him. He's just sad. He's like Sharkberg likes ice cream. I just want someone to take me for ice cream next week. May 5th. Hashtag seniors only. That's a great question. What would be his favorite type of ice cream? Hmm. Gotta do some investigation here. Uh, 
Well, Google failed me. Google didn't. I asked Google what do what do sharkbergs like to eat for ice cream, and uh, it didn't tell me. Ooh, Atlantic flavor. Are you sure it's Atlantic flavor and not something more Pacific? There you go. So my question is, where does the Pacific Ocean end and the Atlantic Ocean begin when you're in Antarctica or the North Pole? And more importantly, is a hot dog a sandwich? Like these are the these are the real questions, right? We should have a class just on that. And is a tomato a fruit? Hayden wins. Hayden wins. The North Pole is the North is the Polar Sea, and the Arctic has the Arctic Sea. All right, guys. Let's take a looky look at what we got here. Going cookie cook. So is a taco a sandwich? Like if I take two tortillas and I put taco filling in between them and eat it like that, did I just have a sandwich? So is a quesadilla a sandwich? See, now you're getting me all confused. So we're gonna find this angle. So again, we always go with the sides opposite of each other. So I'm gonna have 25 squared equals 62 squared plus 45 squared minus two times 62 times 45 cosine of theta. Okay, hopefully this is enough practice for you guys to feel comfortable with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve this. So I'm gonna get 25 squared minus 62 squared minus 45 squared all over negative two times 62 times 45 uh, and then cosine inverse of all of this equals theta. So I'm gonna type that into my calculator. So I'm gonna get cosine of 25 squared minus 62 squared minus 45 squared. Oops, I was gonna do that all over. Mm, can't do, okay, I'm just gonna do it old school. I'm just gonna put in parentheses. You guys in your fancy print. Oop divided by, and then parenthesis, 26245, and close that. So I get I, my theta here is about 19.98 degrees. Okay, so if Sharkberg here had just started out at a different angle of action at 19.98 degrees, they could have been much more efficient in their thing. So with that said, guys, uh, that's all I really wanted to do today uh, was just practice law of cosine, uh, see if you guys had questions. So what's going to happen is tomorrow we're going to have our practice for this class. So we'll, we'll have the homework. You guys can work through it. And then remember that the review assignment is up and ready. So if you guys want to work on that, I would suggest working on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end class early. So if you guys want to get started on the review, you can do that. Uh, and then if you're remote, you guys can peace out. Uh, and then uh, let me know, guys, if you have any questions. And that's it for today. Yeah, take care, guys.